Welcome back. I couldn't be more pleased to have with us for this segment a man that I've come to admire tremendously for his past service to his country in uniform, uh, notably that of the British Armed Forces, but also the service that he's rendering really to the free world broadly at the moment. As a speaker, as a writer, as a commentator, he is Colonel Richard Kemp. He served for roughly 30 years in the British Army, rising to the rank, of course, of colonel. But um, the work that he's doing at the moment, including, quite literally, a tour of the United States, is of incalculable importance, as it really brings to bear his military expertise and background, but also just a clear-eyed vision of what we're up against and why we must wage and win what I call the war for the free world. Colonel Kemp, welcome back to Secure Freedom Radio. It's great to have you with us again, sir. Thank you, Frank. It's really a real pleasure to be with you as well. Colonel Kemp, I know you are in the States at the moment, touring the nation, talking a bit about some of the threats that this country and the free world more generally are facing, uh, notably from the Islamic Republic of Iran. I am tremendously concerned about the deal that President Obama is fashioning with the Iranians, at least so we're told, and wonder what your thoughts are on that agreement as it stands now, and more broadly, what uh, we should make of the Iranian regime as well. Yeah, um, I, I'm I'm deeply concerned, like you are, about the um, the, the, the possible deal with Iran. Um, and I, I, I agree with the, the words of uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, who I think um, currently is, is speaking almost in Churchillian terms, with the same Churchillian wisdom as we saw in the 1940s. Um, I was fortunate enough to be in Congress when he made a, a speech about Iran there a few months back, and he, he pointed out then that pretty much any deal that is likely to be on the table with the United States uh, and Iran and, and the other members of the P5 plus one uh, is going to pave the way for an Iranian nuclear weapon. I think that's a very real prospect. I don't believe um, that any of the proposed methods of monitoring or keeping the Iranians to uh, an agreement are likely to occur. And, and, and also, if, if or are likely to be effective, should I say. And if, if indeed um, they are, then I'd, you know the, 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 the proposed agreement seems to um, have a sunset clause in about 10 years when they will be, I guess, free to to go ahead and, and do what they're planning to do. So I think that's a, I think it's a, it's a real threat to the United States, to the Western world, and of course, I think predominantly to Israel and to the other countries in the Middle East. It's unimaginable to me that they would wait 10 years, uh, given that they seem to have basically everything in place now, and some authorities say perhaps even nuclear weapons themselves. Colonel, you've also been talking about what the regime has been doing in the non-nuclear space, shall we say, that has threatened American interests and, in fact, cost American lives. Talk a bit about what your analysis suggests is uh, the sort of consequence of uh, trying to sort of turn a blind eye to some of the other behavior that the Iranians have engaged in in pursuit of this deal. Well, I'm speaking in, in Washington and New York on this subject in the coming week, and I think it's extremely important that the Americans and the Americans' allies uh, fully understand the nature of the Iranian regime. Many do, but many also, I think, um, have slightly rosy-colored uh, views about what Iran is about these days, uh, particularly with the, the placement by Ayatollah Khomeini of uh, President Rouhani, the smiling President Rouhani, who is, you know, tries to come across as the soft, cuddly, grinning face of the regime. The reality is the regime is built on an, an anti American agenda. That's what it, that's what the, the revolution was all about in 1979. It's still what the country is about. We've we've seen even during the negotiations between the United States and Iran, we saw Iran practicing destroying a U.S. aircraft carrier mock-up at sea. Now that 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 tells a big story. We can't just ignore actions like that as well as their words. But even more so, over the last 10, 15 years, the Iranians have been directly responsible for killing more than a 1,000 Americans in Afghanistan and in Iraq, uh, and also a large number of America's allies, including uh, British soldiers. And they've done this either by the use of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, an instrument of the Islamic State, of the Iranian state, um, and, and also by the use of Shia militias, such as Hezbollah and other militias in, uh, in Iraq, 
uh, who have been trained by the IRGC and using the same tactics as Hezbollah and the IRGC and Hamas have used against Israel in Gaza and in Lebanon. Now, we can't just ignore this offensive attitude and this, this murderous attitude against the United States by Iran. And the only reason it's stopped at present, for, temporarily stopped, is because the Americans withdrew and redeployed out of Afghanistan and Iraq. If, if, if Iran has a chance to kill more Americans, you can be assured they will. Um, as you look at this, uh, I, I want to visit with you about something that I discussed earlier in the program with Bill Gertz, and that is, if the president actually goes forward with what he signaled is his intent, which is to turn over to Iran perhaps tens of billions of dollars, some have said as many as $50 billion from frozen assets. What is that likely to translate into in your professional estimation in terms of enhanced capacity to attack Americans or their interests and allies uh, in that region and perhaps far beyond? Well, we've seen um, Iranian aggression uh, and expansion across the region, and perhaps most notably recently in uh, in Syria, um, uh, propping up the uh, Assad regime in Syria. We've seen um, the Iranian exp- expansion into Yemen, um, supporting the Houthis, uh, and and establishing, uh, you know, as pr- pretty firm control and likelihood of even further control, firmer control there. Um, plus, we've also seen, of course, Iran motivating uh, and supplying and supporting and financing Hamas and other terrorist groups in Gaza against Israel. We've seen uh, Iran funding and directing attacks against. Uh, Jews and against Israelis and other American allies around the world, including in Europe and in in, in recent months and years. So I think providing Iran with this huge amount of extra funding is going to, much of it is going to be directed into their um, campaign, their ongoing campaign against the US and its allies. And I think we can see, you know, even further expansion in the region and even further um, at least planned and possibly in some cases successful terrorist attacks around the world. We're speaking with Colonel Richard Kemp, a veteran of the British Army, a man who has served with great distinction in uniform, um, also was attached to the cabinet office in his country and has been very deeply involved in counterterrorism operations and helping the rest of us, particularly now that he's taken off the uniform, understand the nature of the threats we're facing. Uh, You've written and spoken uh, at some length about Hamas, uh, Colonel, and I just want to visit with you quickly about that. Uh, This is an organization, of course, that uh, the Iranians have also supported. There are those in the United States who would have us believe, unfortunately, including the Obama administration, that we can do business with Hamas. Um, That is part of a unity government with Israel. We must uh, continue to have funds flow to the Palestinians. We must uh, seek to bring about a Palestinian state, which would, of course, include areas controlled by Hamas, um, which may extend into the West Bank, as a matter of fact, if people have their uh, their way. What uh, what should we understand about this organization and the Muslim Brotherhood of which it is a part? Well, I think we should understand that there's little, but little to choose between Hamas and the Islamic State. Um, Hamas, obviously, are operating in a defined area at present. They're, they control Gaza. They uh, plan strikes, and they've carried out strikes against Israel from Gaza. They have aspirations. They have a presence in the West Bank as well, and they wish to take the West Bank over. But apart from the geographical constraints that they currently face, they have very similar objectives, and their objectives are primarily to destroy the state of Israel. That's what they're about. That's what their charter requires them to do, to destroy the state of Israel. And our appeasement of them, and our you know, perhaps proposed appeasement of them, is simply going to have the effect of emboldening them and making them even more dangerous than they are today. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And that, uh, unfortunately, it seems to be exactly what the Obama administration has in mind. We will fight it on the beaches. We will fight it on the streets. Speaking of Churchill, uh, thank you, Colonel Kemp, for all that you've done to fight for freedom, uh, both in uniform and now out of it, uh, and for joining us from time to time. I hope you'll come back again soon and perhaps for a longer visit. Uh, there's so much more to talk about. In the meantime, stay well, sir, and uh, thank you for your time, especially in this country, trying to raise the alarm and uh, our situational awareness. Uh, next up, DeRoy Murdoch will join us. We'll talk with him about many things, including what is happening in our inner cities and what it might mean for our security as well. Straight ahead.